Imagine if your data can predict trends, uncover hidden insights, and recommend solutions without you having to lift a finger. Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Power BI's AI features to accelerate your data analysis. I'll quickly show you how to use these tools effectively for your analysis. The first one we're going to look at is the quick insights. I'm going to open up my Power BI service. This is Microsoft Fabric user interface. Then I'll click on my workspace. Right on this, my workspace, I'll quickly come to where I have my data. I have some sample data here. So I'm going to over on this data set and then come over here to click on the ellipses. With this ellipses, I'll scroll to select get quick insight. Then at the top right corner, it has shown me that insights are ready. Then I'll click to view insight. When I click to view insight, quick insight has returned a number of visuals that it's showing me the key insights for my data set. So this is what Quick Insight basically does. It scans your data set and uncover patterns. It shows correlations, outliers, and also show you some other key insights that will help and guide you in your analysis. This is how you can use Quick Insight to perform very fast and smart data analysis. So the next feature I'm going to show you is the Analyze feature. I'll come over to my Power BI desktop and right here I have a simple line chart and a simple bar chart here. In order to use the analyze feature, I'm going to select a data point. If I select this data point, I'll right click on it. Once I right click on this data point, I'll scroll down to where I have analyzed and it's going to say explain the increase because that data point has an increase in sales. If I click on another data point that looks low, if I right click on it and I scroll down to analyze, it's the, it will show explain the decrease. If I select to explain the decrease, it's going to show me an insight telling me that this is the analysis of 23.44% decrease in some of sales for that particular day. So this is just showing the factors that led to the decrease in that sum of sales. If the data point was an increase, we are trying to explain the increase in sum of sales for that day. It's also going to show us factors that led to the increase of sales in that particular day. And for each of these um, visuals, this is a waterfall chart. We can change this chart to a scatter plot. You can also change it to a column start column chart and you can equally change it to a ribbon chart let's say you want to add this visual to your report you can click here this plus sign to add this to your report and you can also use this thumbs up and thumbs down button to give feedback about this feature so if i click if i click back here you see the visual that was added directly from the analyze feature that is how you can perform faster data analysis on your data set right now i don't need this visual i'm going to delete it off and also if you can also use the analyze feature on bar chart you use it mostly with line chart and with bar chart if i select if i right click on any of this data point and over on analyze it's going to say find where the distribution is different this is a categorical data so it will show us the distribution as to why there are differences in them so that's how you can use analyze feature to analyze your data quickly the next ai feature i'll be showing us is the ai visuals right on the home tab if you come to this inserts group if i select this drop down and scroll down i can see ai visuals these are the ai visuals in power bi we have four of them but we have three major ones with this i'm going to show you how to work with the key influencers the decomposition tree and of course the q and a visual so right here, if you want to add the Q&A visual, I'm going to add it directly from here, Q&A. So Q&A is one of the most coolest visual because it allows you to use natural language to ask questions about your data and you get results with a visual. So this is the Q&A right now. Right here, it has already suggested questions that you can ask about your data set and you can equally ask other type of questions. So I want to ask, what was the total sales? for May 2014. Total sales for May 2014. Once I type that, I'm going to select Summit. So when I select Summit, it's going to show me the total sales for May 2014. The most important thing you need to note about this Q&A visuals is if you are asking questions, make sure that the words that you use tallies with the column names in your data set so that it can return the results faster for you. If you want to turn this AI Q and A visual into a standard visual. You click on this button. Once I click on this button, it's going to turn it into a standard card visual of which I can quickly add to 
my report so you see it's very easy you bring in the q and a ask question about your data set it gives you an answer in a visual you add it directly to your report how cool is that the next AI visual is the decomposition tree. So with the decomposition tree, it allows you to visualize data across multiple dimensions. It just breaks this data into multiple dimensions and you see which factor contributes to the metric that you're analyzing. So if I click here, I'm going to expand this. So in the few worlds of this decomposition tree, we have analyzed. So on this analyze, I'm going to select the cells. What you want to analyze has to be a metric. It could be a measure or a it could be a measure or a variable that you can aggregate. Then we want to explain by, we want to explain by the product. We want to explain by segment. And of course, we also want to explain by the country. So I'm going to select this. Once I select that, I will click on this plus sign and it's going to show me how to split this data. So if I click on this, it's going to show up high value, low value. If you want to select, if you want to split the data by high value, by the low values or the variables that you already selected, I want to split by the product. And of course, I want to also split by segment and then by country as well. So I'm going to click this plus sign and select country. So with the decomposition tree, we are analyzing the sum of cells by the product. From this node, the highlighted node here is just telling us that the first product here, Paseo, is the one that contributes more to the cells, including the segment, government, and of course the country, Canada. If I want to check for another product, I'm going to select this. And you can see the nodes leading to the product, the segment, and the country that contributed to the cells or the metric that was being analyzed. Another very cool AI visual that we have in Power BI is the key influencers. I'm going to bring in the key influencers. Once I click to bring in the key influencers, it helps us to understand factors that affect these metrics that we are analyzing. Let's say I want to analyze cells. I'll bring in cells. So the few wells are similar to the composition tree. I'll bring in cells under the analyze. We want to explain by product and also want to explain by segment. You can add as many variables that you want or categories that you want to explain by. With these key influencers, we have two tabs here. So we have key influencers, we have top segments. If I click on key influencers, the first question it says for what the key influencers is asking is what influences cells to increase. So this is just telling us what it makes sales to increase. This means that when the segment is small business, sales is likely to increase. And if I click on here to select decrease, it's going to show us what will make our sales to decrease. So when the, when the segment is channel partners or the segment is mid market, our sales is likely to decrease. So this can help you make data driven decisions faster. If we click on the top segment, it's going to show us the segments that actually led to a low that will likely lead to low sales and you can also see segments that will likely lead to high sales so this is going to make your work very seamless another ai feature that we have in power bi is the forecasting feature forecasting feature is mostly used for time-based visual so this forecast features helps to predict future values based on historical data so we have a time series data here if i click on it under the format pane, I'm going to scroll down to where I have the forecast feature. I'm going to turn this forecast feature on. Once I turn it on, you can see the shaded area. This shaded portion is the portion that is being forecasted. I'll expand that to edit some things. For the forecast length, you can change the length. This For this forecast, we are forecasting for the next 10 months. That's why you see July 2015 over here. We're forecasting for the next 10 months to see what the future values will be. And for this forecast too, it also has a confidence interval. This confidence interval is just going to show you the likelihood that the future values will fall within this expected range that you have here. That's how you can use the forecast feature to predict values. The next cool AI feature we have in Power BI is the anomaly detection feature. To use the anomaly detection feature, I have to turn off the forecast feature. You cannot use both of them on the same visual. You have to use them separately. If I turn off the forecast feature, the anomalies feature is being enabled for me to toggle it on. So I'm going to toggle on the anomaly detection feature. Once I, I toggle it on, you already see the shaded area. The shaded area is showing us the expected range of values 
and this black dot this other point is showing the anomalies right on this anomaly the option we have sensitivity option if you change the sensitivity if you increase it it's going to detect any little values that deviates from the range of values that you have here then you can also change the shape of the of the button here you can change the shape to any other shape that you want you can change the size of the shape including the color or you can even toggle off the expected range then for the anomaly feature you can go for that to look or explain this anomaly by clicking on the data points you can also select the data point to get the explanations for the anomaly so you want to select the data points for the anomaly the marker Fabia is going to run an analysis and show you what leads to that particular anomaly the next ai feature in this video is the text analytics so right now i'm going to click on transform data i'm going to open up my power query editor the text analytics is in power query editor so i'm going to open it up text analytics is basically to analyze text data most times you want to find the sentiment analysis where you want to gauge customers feedback or reviews you want to know if it's positive if it's neutral or negative so i'm going to bring in a text data and i'm going to select this once i select this text data i'll open it up here so once i've loaded this text data i'm going to click ok this text data this data set is twitter thread analysis data set so right now what i need to do is i want to find the sentiment score for this tweet we want to see if the tweet is neutral if the tweet is positive or if the tweet is negative i was going to use this ai feature called text analytics so i'm going to select the tweet column right here once i select the tweet column i'll select the add column after selecting the add column i'll just come over to where i have text analytics so this is where you need to look at for the ai insights so i'm going to select text analytics it's going to open up this dialog box i'll just wait for a few seconds for it to render properly these are the different features we can use in text analytics we can find its score sentiments we can extract key phrases you can even detect language what i want to do is to find the score sentiment for our sentiment analysis i'll click on it and the column i want is the tweet column so selecting the tweet column i'm going to select ok the first time you use ai insights in power bi power bi is going to prompt you to set the privacy level of your data so if i click continue i can choose to ignore this privacy level because i'm using this for this tutorial then i'll click save once i click save it's going to process it and return the sentiment score for that tweet here we have the sentiment score for this tweet the scores that are closer to one is positive then those that are closer to zero is negative so you can actually apply this to your power bi desktop and go ahead to visualize it in your report with these ai features data analysis become faster smarter and more intuitive these tools can take your data game to the next level try them out today and see how powerful ai can be